Good evening, and thank you for joining us. We are excited to present 17 Years Ahead with Dr. Kent Holthorp. Learn why your doctor might be treating 17 years behind the current medical literature and research. Dr. Kent Holthorp is the medical director of the Holthorp Medical Group, the National Academy of Hypothyroidism, and the founder of his nutraceutical line, Holtraceuticals. Don't forget to download Dr. Holtorf's tips and tools on how to optimize your thyroid below, and our presentation will begin momentarily. Hi, it's Dr. Kent Holtorf, Medical Director of the Holtorf Medical Group, and welcome to 17 Years Ahead. And I'm saying, why are we doing this? What the heck is 17 years? Well, major medical journals, including New England Journal of Medicine, Journal of American Medical Association, were looking at what doctors know. And what they have found is that most doctors are practicing 10 to 20 years behind what's available in medical literature. What? What the heck? How could that be? Doctors read medical literature, don't they? No, they don't. What they do is they, they just read the limited amount that the drug reps bring in, or they go to their conference once a year, or look at their society for recommendations. And what is, that is made is created, the whole system is created that doctors are not practicing what's based on the most up-to-date research. In fact, these studies have shown that it takes on average a proven new concept, proven, to get accepted into mainstream medicine on average 17 years. So something in medical literature proven, well, the uh, patients say, why isn't everyone doing this? Well, in 17 years, they probably will be. And so this is a, a major issue. They said, okay, what is the big reason that doctors are so behind and what's in medical literature? A number of reasons. Again, talked about doctors really don't read medical journal, but they found even more important was that if you give a doctor 50 studies, 100 studies showing what they're doing is not accurate or optimal, they don't want to hear it. What they've been doing, don't, don't mess with what they've been doing. Now also they'll look to societies like the, let's say, endocrine society or, or if you're a gastroenterologist, the gastroenterology society for their recommendations. But that is actually shown to be the worst level of evidence. It's considered worse than anecdotal stories, which a patient says, oh, I got better with X or Y, because they're shown to change so slowly. It takes 10 to 15 years for them to catch up in all their bureaucracy and, you know, basically they don't keep up. So it, it, it's a major problem. And the patients say, you know, if this is, it's all right here, why isn't everyone doing this? And that's basically the reason because doctors, most doctors are practicing behind. So what we really try to do is really bring this, all these treatments that are just, they're proven, they're here, they're supported by the medical literature that allows you to really have a better, healthier life and not just look at basically, hey, a new, here's the new drug that's going to, it's a copycat drug of something else and, and just out market and provide you with those. But we really want to look at what is going to make you healthy. And a big thing, one of the major things that doctors are not practicing the most up-to-date medicine is with thyroid, uh, especially hypothyroidism, which basically causes fatigue, depression, and it's low in any chronic illness, any stress. Dieting are low, but doctors will say that the standard tests are missing 80 to 90% of people with low thyroid. Started treating that, oh my gosh, I'm a new person. So then got out of anesthesia, which no offense to anesthesiologists, but it's the most mindless specialty ever, you know, just put everyone to sleep. But, um, and then started incorporating all these treatments that, and there's just so many treatments that are like that. That basically you look at the medical research and you're like, oh my gosh, why isn't everyone doing this? And you know, at first, and we would have patients come in feeling terrible for 10 years, you send them, get them better, they're feeling so much better, they go back to their doctor. I was expecting calls from the doctor saying, wow, thank you, what did you do for that patient? No, never, and if you do, they're mad. They dismiss the patient, say, you're no longer allowed to come to my practice, and they're mad. I'm like, what is going on? I'm used to it now, but you know, 10 years ago, I was like, what is wrong with doctors? And that's really what you see. I think you know, egos are much more important than, than basically that, that thirst for knowledge and getting the patient better. And, uh, and doctors, one thing too I found going through uh, medical school is doctors are really, they want to know, hey, if, if you say this, here's all the studies, why isn't everyone else doing it? It's, they're very sheep-like, and so they want to be sure that they aren't going to be criticized by their colleagues, especially if they work in the hospital setting. If a specialist says, hey, you're treating this patient with their normal thyroid, they're more scared of that than being scared of treating the patient optimally. 
So uh, you find that doctors, things change so slowly, and it's particularly a number of areas, including endocrinology. And that's what we'll talk about today is thyroid. And if you can do one thing for, for yourself, make sure your thyroid's fixed. Because I can pretty much guarantee if you have symptoms, you have low thyroid. What, what type of symptoms we typically see, number one. And now people will have different symptoms because what there is is called thyroid resistance. And with stress or aging or any inflammation or chronic illness, what happens is your thyroid levels in the tissue go down but the standard blood tests look normal. In fact, they can, they can look the opposite. And so basically what, what happens, so what, what's, what normally happens with the thyroid? So you have your brain will secrete TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. You can tell I'm not an artist. But that will tell your thyroid right here in your neck, okay, to secrete T4. And T4 doesn't do anything, okay? It needs to go to T3. And T3 actually, 80% of the time, I wish it was that simple. And what really matters is actually what is going on inside the cell, your level of T3, but also the level of reverse T3, because reverse T3 is blocking the thyroid. So your T3 reverse T3 ratio is the most important lab test. But you want to also, here's the thing, if you looked at, for instance, British Medical Journal, major medical journal, showed that a knowledgeable doctor looking at someone's ankle reflex was a better test for thyroid than blood tests. Better to measure of the tissue level, correlate with symptoms better. What? How could, how could that be that a reflex is better than the, the standard blood test? What they found is that a normal reflex goes ch -ch, but the lower the thyroid, the slower the relaxation phase. So we have a computer that measures that. And we find that, again, the overall majority of people that have low thyroid actually will have normal blood levels that typically are checked, which are these, um, but their tissue levels are low. So things to look at is you want to look at this, ask your doctor to get a free T3, reverse T3 ratio, okay? Um, and you need to make sure that that's, that that's optimal, that this is at least uh, two times that. Um, and then also does these other tests, such as the, um, uh, the reflex that we said, also, metabolism. We check everyone's metabolism that comes in. And we found, you know, people go, oh, I can't lose weight. I have no metabolism. And go, oh, sure, you're just eating, you know, bonbons in the middle of the night. Uh, and not telling anyone, just need to exercise more. We find that basically majority of people have about 25% lower than normal metabolism. What is this from? So they're burning 25% less calories than they should at rest. So that's about 500 calories a day. And if you either... If you don't do anything to eat normally, then you're going to gain about a pound a week. So you have to either eat 500 calories less a day, which will leave you hungry and, and is, it doesn't work long term, or you have to exercise for two hours a day just to stay even. And we find overall with people will have low metabolism if they have any numerous number of things. Stress is, is a big one. In fact, they did, they did a test where they looked at the, the T3 levels inside the cell um, but what they did was they added serum from a stressed person versus serum from a person who wasn't stressed. They found if you add the serum of a stressed person to the cultures, that the T3 doesn't get into the cell. It's blocked. So you get a thyroid resistance. Again, you have thyroid in the blood. All oh, that's fine. But what you want to know is what's going on in the tissue. So how do you diagnose that? Again, so the big thing is looking at that metabolism, which we find is about 25% lower in most people. Um, and need to fix it. If you don't fix that, your, your chance of long-term successful weight loss, just forget it because if, and also what happens, you diet more, as you lose weight, your body goes, hey, we're losing weight, we need to lower metabolism more. So it's a vicious cycle. The more you diet, the more weight you lose, the lower your metabolism. No wonder diet and exercise doesn't work. 95% failure rate. And so why aren't we doing anything different? We just keep saying more diet, more exercise. No, fix everyone's thyroid. I mean, it's, it's nuts. Also, just drinking out of plastic water bottles lowers your thyroid. But why is anyone fixing it? Well, again, because the standard tests just say, look at this, even though it's totally inaccurate. Another marker that you should ask your doctor for is to check what's called sex hormone binding globulin, sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. And what this does, this, this goes up in response to two things in the liver. So the liver secretes SHBG according to the level of estrogen, and thyroid in the liver. 
Okay, so now you have a marker for the level of those two things, and you can tell, so in a woman, it should be above 70 to 80. If it's not, she's either low estrogen, low thyroid, or both. So if you look at a premenopausal woman, especially if they're having periods where you know their estrogen's fine, then they're low thyroid. So it's another marker that you can look at the tissue level of thyroid. But really the most important thing for thyroid is symptoms. And we have, when, pa when patients come in, there's about 30 questions we ask them whether or not they have minimal or severe symptoms. And we can, at a glance, accurately tell if someone's gonna be hypothyroid or not. And it correlates with their blood tests, with their metabolism, with the reflex test, that if you have a lot of symptoms, including big ones are depression, fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, any chronic illness, autoimmune disease, insulin resistance, diabetes. Insulin resistant patients and diabetic patients, which is severe insulin resistance, have, are shown to have a 50% reduction in T4 to T3 conversion, okay? But these levels look fine. So, but what are doctors, again, you've got an endocrinologist and he's giving you insulin for type 2 diabetes, which is making you gain more weight. And they look at this and it looks fine. And they go, oh, just diet more. Okay, the diet more, now it drops your thyroid further in the tissues. So, you're, so you go, I just can't, I just can't handle this. And you just go off your diet and it gets even worse. So it's a vicious cycle. The more weight you gain, the lower your metabolism, the lower your thyroid. So you gotta fix it. Stress. We are not made to handle the stress of this modern society with you know, we were used to be cavemen, cave women, and we go out of the cave during the day, run into the saber tooth tiger, whatever, and run back. That would happen once a week. And, you know, now we have basically texts and emails and, and you know, traffic. We're not made for this constant stress. We just aren't. So a lot of physiological repercussions for that, especially all these, you know, devices that we can multitask. But we're not made for that. And one thing the body does is starts shutting down. It starts shutting down metabolism, lowering the thyroid. But again, the standard blood tests look normal. So... Um, looking at, you really want to find a doctor that will look at your symptoms and also look at those other tests, including free to the reverse the ratio, and not look at just the TSH and T4 levels. And you'll find that so many times it's like, you go, oh my gosh, and even some people, if they have low thyroid, they just can't lose weight. Other people are tired. Other people, depression. Depression, okay, antidepressants. Antidepressants work for about 30% of people, and that's what studies across the board show. Well, placebo works in 25%, so really it's only a 5% difference. But you look at the STAR study, which was the largest study ever done on antidepressants, and showed that T3 was a better antidepressant with less side effects than antidepressants. And why isn't everyone using this? It's right there in the literature, largest study ever done. Other studies looked at like bipolar patients. They found they had 65 patients that had been on, they were non-responders to bipolar medication, were on average of 14 different medications with no response. Okay, so they took those patients, they gave them all T3, so again, all active thyroid, not Synthroid, the T4 that's typically given, and they found 85% had, uh, had a significantly positive response and 30% total resolution of symptoms. So again, these were patients that had no response to medications. 85% um, of them improved significantly and 25% uh, had no bipolar or depression left. Why aren't these psychiatrists using T3? Um, crazy. So... Um, hey, Dr. Walter, we have some questions from the audience. Sure. So I'm wondering about, I feel really tired and fatigued and I'm just wondering what's happening to me as I age? Are you saying that my thyroid is not functioning as well as I age, just aging? Well, when you look at just aging, much like, like stress or any chronic illness, is what you find, so here's basically your, your TSH and your, your T3 level. And what you'll find as you age, this drops. So your TSH actually goes down with, with age, okay? And so, but a high, again, a high TSH is low thyroid, low TSH is high thyroid. So. People look at an older person and go, your TSH is low, you might be a little high, but also they look at the T3 level, it does the same thing. So the T3 level, which is the active hormone, actually declines with age, but so does the TSH. So if someone is older, the older you get, the lower your thyroid and the more inaccurate the tests are and the more you need thyroid. And they'll say, well, yeah, you should, you should be lower thyroid because you're older. Well, 
you, okay, you should have cancer because people will only get cancer. You should have heart disease. It means you don't do anything. No, significantly improve your quality of life and prevent illness, prevent diabetes, prevent obesity, prevent depression, and treat all those things by giving T3. So age is one of the significant risk factors for low thyroid. And if you look at you know someone, it depends on how much stress and how much uh, what someone's age. But most people over the age of 50 or even 40 have low thyroid. Then you add stress upon that and the depression, the family history. And again, genetics plays a significant part too. Uh, what they found is depressed people don't transport T3, the transporter of T3, the active thyroid, into the brain does not work as well as normal individuals. So again, you know, giving T3, we, what we want to do is you want to basically just bring these back to optimal levels and it's just, the results are often miraculous. We have so many patients that come in and they've been to 10, 20 doctors and they get diagnosed with all sorts of things so they can't do anything. You fix their thyroid, they go, oh my God, I'm a new person. And that's what happened to me. And that's what we see over and over and over. It just can do miracles. Hey, Dr. Holdorf, we have some questions from the audience. Um, okay. I have with me my T4 and TSH tests, and they're falling in the normal ranges, but I still don't feel good. What does this mean? Okay, the question is, is that we see this all the time, is that patients come in and say, my doctor says I'm normal, and also especially with the TSH and T4 are normal, how come I still feel terrible? Let's talk about normal versus optimal levels first. So normally... When, when basically, what is a normal range? When doctor says, well, you're normal, what does that mean? Well, the lab will take basically 95% of the test results and say those are normal. So only the highest and lowest 2.5% of a value is considered abnormal. So if you're the lowest 5%, you're considered normal, lowest 10%, but it doesn't mean you're optimal. It's like saying, well, you got a D minus, okay, great but it doesn't work like that. It's basically more optimal levels, you're gonna feel better. So the key, one key is one is do the right tests and look at the, the right parameters and things to diagnose, the right treatment, but also one key is you wanna be optimal, not just normal. So when you have a normal range here, and like this from X value, whatever it may be, to Y, and then let's say you're here, the doctor says, oh, you're fine, you're normal. But if let's say let's say this is T3, and if you but if you bring it up to here, you're gonna feel so much better, have more energy, more metabolism, and just be healthier. Also prevent heart disease. Um, you know, major studies are showing that you know a better way to lower cholesterol, safer and more effective is to just optimize the thyroid. Cholesterol levels drop. You know, so much money is being put into you know basic cholesterol lowering medications. And they now have a black box warning for heart failure, increased risk for diabetes. We have people come out on the statin drugs. Basically, they uh, come in and say, I have no memory. And the doctor goes, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's from the medication. We had one person basically bring her, uh, her daughter in and said they diagnosed her with dementia. And I said, oh my gosh, go off the statin that some other doctor basically prescribed. And her memory came back, you know, and things like this are happening. We wrote an FDA letter, but they said, oh, no, they don't, they don't see it enough. But, I mean, the goal is the healthier, the thing is, the high cholesterol is a symptom of low thyroid. So, just optimizing the thyroid, you're going to not need the statin and have those side effects. Um, and so, the other thing is, again, people will come in and say, hey, my TSH is normal. And we talked about that, where basically, as your TSH, if it's high, then they say you're hypo. Okay, but, and then a low TSH low, they say you're hyper, and we'll talk about with treating what that means, and if you're normal, you're normal. The problem is, again, that doesn't work. It's just a very simple screening test, and the majority of patients with low thyroid will have a normal TSH and T4. And again, what you want to look at are different tests and looking at, what you really want to know is what's in the cell. So blood tests in themselves tell us what's in the blood, not in the cells. So how do you determine that? Again, basically, you look at different blood tests, the free to the reversity ratio, and a lot of that information and hundreds of studies showing that this is what I'm saying is not just me saying it, but shown in the medical liter the literature over and over and over that free T3 reversity ratio, much better test, more accurate, uh, that the TSH is going to miss 
80% of people, especially if you have, again, symptoms, depression, diabetes, stress, weight gain. Okay, let's say if, if you're overweight, it suppresses your metabolism. Then if you diet, it's even worse. And they say, well, just more diet and exercise. You're killing your metabolism, especially women. And what they found in studies show that especially a woman who exercises will have a lower metabolism than someone who doesn't because the body will sense at a certain point that that is too much stress. That, you know, it depends on a different, for different genetics. But uh, for women, they aren't designed to be, let's say, long distance runners or uh, and depending on how much that is, a lot of times it just kills their metabolism. They say, oh my gosh, all I'm doing is I'm doing the treadmill three hours a day and I keep gaining weight. And that's what happens. You combine that, especially with dieting, there goes your metabolism. So unless you fix the thyroid, your chance of long-term, basically, weight loss is, is almost nil. So you, so you really need to fix that. Dr. Rolter, we have another question. The question is, so I'm looking at my results and you're telling me that I, I see here that my T3 is not right and my reverse T3 is very high. What should I, what should I do? Should I take, take Synthroid? Or is there, what else should I take? Yeah, so again, so let's, let's look at the, the standard is, let's say for one, okay, most people that are low thyroid have a thyroid resistance at the cellular level. Now, primary hypothyroidism is where the thyroid is not making enough T4, okay? And that's the only thing that the TSH will pick up is primary hypothyroidism. The problem is, is that there's also secondary and tertiary where the body is suppressing the TSH. So instead of going up when there's low thyroid, it goes down. because that's So any inflammation, any stress causes that. And then also low tissue level of T3, again, not reflected by the TSH or the T4, but again, the low cellular levels. Now the standard one, let's say you are finally diagnosed with, with low thyroid, the doctor says, okay, I'll give you some Synthroid, T4. And what happens is the T4, again, we talked about, nor it doesn't do anything unless it's converted to T3. It can also go to that reverse T3. Now the more stress, the more inflammation, the sicker, older, um, whatever it may be, you're going to do less and less of this. This is blocked and make more and more of this. So even though this, especially too, if you take more Synthroid, you go up, it starts making more reverse T3. So you're actually creating more of a blocking hormone. Say, so, okay, how did that become the standard of treatment? Well, R was introduced, which is basically pig thyroid, T4, T3. It's mostly T4. Um, and much better than Synthroid, but straight T3 is even better for most people because you're getting all active. But how did Synthroid become the basic of the standard treatment? Well, when they came out um, uh, about 15 years after that, they said, well, we now have a pure thyroid, not this old pig thyroid. Uh, and that became the standard. So they, what they learned is how to market is they basically supported all the endocrine societies at the time. And, uh, and basically so that they would be sponsors of all the lectures. And so that became the way, the modern way to treat low thyroid, which just give this pure T4. And they were very good at saying, oh, don't, you know, armor is in uh, basically too much variability and, um, and potency is often different from batch to batch. But there's never been a problem actually for armor. All the recalls have been on Synthroid. But still they've learned that you don't need to prove the science, you just support the Endocrine Society, the American Thyroid Association, sponsor their lectures, and that becomes the de facto standard. Even though studies have shown there was never a problem with armor, that Synthroid was the one that has the variability problems and it's finally coming out. But still, and Synthroid was not until recently even FDA approved. And how did it become the standard? It wasn't, it couldn't even follow the, get enough evidence to be FDA approved. And when they finally went to, to the makers of Synthroid, and again, they've been uh, sold, bought and sold to the pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical company that owns Synthroid said, no, we're not doing it. And the FDA goes, okay. I mean, they have that much power. And so then after a couple of years, yes, they finally did, were forced to get FDA approval, but it just shows you how, you know, these drug companies, they're, they're ruling the science and really what is perpetuated as science. And you even ask, you know, I think 90 plus percent of endocrinologists will say, well, Synthroid's the way to go. Well, where's the study to show that? And it's kind of like, how do you diagnose low thyroid? Well, a high TSH is required for low thyroid, but hmm, here's a study show that doesn't work. 
Well, it's just become the, the standard. And again, doctors don't want to go against what anyone says. And it's easy, but unfortunately it doesn't work. And just like Synthroid. So some people, Synthroid is fine. Uh, T4, if you don't have any stress, don't have any weight issues, basically very healthy, no inflammation, you're, you're, you're young, then yeah, the Synthroid's probably could, can work. For, but for the overall majority of people, it doesn't work very well. It may help some. Some people makes them worse. So adding T3 to the T4, so now you're not getting this reverse T3, get a better benefit. So, so basically armor, uh, nature thyroid is T4, T3, but mostly T4. So you still have that problem. Now people will say, well, giving, you know, mostly T4 is more natural because that's what the hypothyroidism, which is the problem with the secretion of thyroid. Well, the problem is the most majority of people with low thyroid, their thyroid's fine. But we'll talk about Hashimoto's and other things. Again, it's a amount in the tissues that's low, and that's what needs to be diagnosed and fixed. It's not really fixing the thyroid, again, which is why the, the T4 doesn't work. But just using the TSH doesn't work. So, um, so again, with primary hypothyroidism, which you'll hear Hashimoto's, which is basically when the body starts attacking the thyroid. And basically to create antibodies that are attacking the thyroid. And when this happens, it causes thyroid to be inflamed and it kills off the thyroid over time. Now, as soon as it gets, it gets bad enough, the, the, most doctors will pick it up with a high TSH because again, it's primary hypothyroidism. But oftentimes you have 20 years where they say you're, you're normal, you're normal, you're not low enough yet. What also happens with Hashimoto's is as you're killing off the thyroid, you're dumping thyroid into, this, into the blood. So you're getting these high levels, even though you're killing it off, it's going like this. So people are like, oh my gosh, I'm anxious, I can't sleep, but then I'm fatigued. So what do you do? Most doctors say, don't even check it because what, what can they do to fix it? They say, well, you can't do anything anyways. Well, yes, you can. Basically, you can do, oftentimes there's a chronic infection that's driving this. So usually there's two sides to your immune system, TH1 and TH2. This gets stuff inside the cell, this gets stuff outside the cell. Usually they're balanced. But if you have any chronic infection, inflammation, stress, it basically causes what's called TH1 to TH2 shift. This side's too low, this side's too high. So basically this is the part that has antibodies and it's attacking the thyroid. So the key is, is to bring that immune system back to normal. So when people say, we'll even give so-called immune boosters to people with Hashimoto's. Well, don't they have high, too much immunity? Um, well, this side's too high, this side's too low. So if you bring up this side, it's like a teeter-totter, lowers that side. So again, things that will dry, allergies will do it. And we'll give a, a treatment called low-dose allergen, where you'll see people have allergies now and sensitivities. And you should go to the, the, um, uh, the immunologist or um, uh, the aller allergist, and they basically put all these different allergies, see what you're allergic to, then give you increasing doses of that allergy kind of overwhelm the system so the system goes ah oh, forget it we're not going to attack it anymore but it's interesting there's a treatment that's been in europe for about 20 years about 100 doctors doing it here in the united states and what what is the compounding pharmacy can, can put together all the available allergens so they have foods and then all the inhalants like cats dog rag viruses lyme disease will oftentimes have autoimmune disease and oftentimes, like someone with, with Lyme especially will come up with, they'll be diagnosed with pre-lupus, Hashimoto's, and all these things. That, and they'll say, we don't know what it is. They'll get diagnosed with mixed connective tissue disease because they don't know, they can't put a, a specific tag on it, but they have all these autoantibodies. But again, it's from that immune system that is out of balance. So yes, you can treat it. So you want to check those antibodies against what's called TPO and antithyroid gum antibodies. But... One study, they took people who were fatigued. That was one criteria, they were fatigued. They did thyroid biopsies. They found that 80% of fatigued patients had inflammation of the thyroid. But, uh, but the majority of those patients did not have antibodies against the thyroid. So Hashimoto's, again, the, the definition is having those antibodies, but over a majority of people with fatigue will also have an inflamed thyroid. Again, it won't show up on the blood test, but you go from optimal level to suboptimal, now you're fatigued. And what they found is that giving thyroid, regardless of the levels, again, because they said they were all normal, resulted in improvement in their fatigue and energy, despite the fact that they're so-called normal levels. And again, the majority of people had this inflammation that, again, wasn't shown on the blood tests. I just want to mention also what conditions are associated with low thyroid. Um, really, 
any disease associated with aging is associated with low cellular energy. That's what the new studies are showing. For instance, the Rotterdam study, over 2,000 patients showed that low normal thyroid, again, not abnormally low, but low normal, so in the normal range, but on the low side, had a higher risk for heart disease than if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, if you smoked or even had diabetes. So, oh my God, people are taking all these medications for those things, just fix the thyroid and much better outcomes. And uh, not only you feel better, you don't have the risk of those other medications. So when you look at the theories of aging now, they're really looking at it differently. And what they're finding is a common denominator is low cellular energy. So as you age and your thyroid drops, the cellular energy goes down, you, the cells don't have enough energy to heal and rejuvenate. So just they sacrifice that to just try to maintain basically the, the basic functions of the cell. So you look at, again, heart disease, low thyroid, significant increased risk with high cholesterol. Uh, you look at diabetes. If you have diabetes in your family, I can pretty much guarantee that your levels in the cell are, uh, of thyroid are suboptimal. It's going to make you much more prone to getting diabetes. So say, oh, gaining weight, and if you have you know, any type 2 diabetes in the family, that what you want to do, instead of waiting till you get it, and they'll say, even with diabetic medications, oh, you're not bad enough yet, we, we won't use it. One, you, don't, you won't need those medications if you prevent it by taking thyroid. So often we see this as the case, and we're surprised that people even lasted that long when they have such low metabolism, and they're just dieting like crazy, and no one believes them, and they keep gaining weight. So again, any genetic um, predisposition, diabetes, heart disease, any of the chronic neuro, um, uh, neuromuscular degeneration, um, chronic neurological diseases, MS, Parkinson's, you know, it studies depression. Basically, depression is low. Basically, you, your cells can't produce serotonin and dopamine. They don't have enough energy. So giving thyroids increased secretion of uh, serotonin, um, uh, dopamine, and you actually will prevent the depression or in, you know, basically be a better treatment for depression as talked about the STAR report than antidepressants. So, so many conditions, not only is it treating the symptoms, say, hey, I feel better, all that's great, and less depression, but you're preventing chronic illness, and you're actually preventing the aging process. And again, because it's all about cellular energy. We have a question from the audience. Yeah. My dad's been already diagnosed high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, and he's already taking medication. Is there any way to, to reverse that, or could he, would thyroid help him? What's the course? What should you do now? So the question is, is that their dad or uh, someone has type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, basically is it now he's already got it, it can help reverse it? And the answer is yes, it can. Low thyroid actually is, causes high blood pressure. When you give thyroid, it helps the vessels dilate, and so your basically your blood pressure drops. So low thyroid can be a direct um, uh, basic cause of, of hypertension, and then especially diabetes. What is diabetes is really is that low cellular energy. And, and what happens with the chronic inflammation, the low, it's just a vicious cycle, is that the thyroid doesn't get into the tissues, um, that in, uh, and then you get basically weight gain, cause more diabetes, more insulin resistance, more thyroid resistance, lower thyroid, and it's just getting worse and worse. And then so they finally go on medications and that basically isn't enough. They start going on insulin, which causes the body to gain more weight. And it's just like, oh my gosh, and you get heart disease. So why not prevent it initially and just optimize your thyroid? And it just saves from taking all these medications, safer, more effective. And again, so many people are low and just even Drink out of plastic water bottles, the, the BPA, the, bis, uh, the bisphenol A, shown to block the thyroid receptors and everywhere except the pituitary. So again, the TSH, because the TSH is the level, actually reflects the level of thyroid in the pituitary, but it's completely different than everywhere else in the body. So the BPA will block the tissue stimulation of thyroid in the cells, but not the pituitary. So again, we're just bombarded with pesticides and plastics that all block the thyroid receptor. And, uh, and also, just a side note, it also blocks testosterone significantly. And uh, I was talking to the lab, the major lab cut the normal testosterone range in half for men. And I called, they said, well, you use a different assay? They said, no, men are lower now. So what they do is, they, again, they just adjust the normal range so 95% of the people fall into that. But, and that's what they'll do with aging as well and say, well, you're normal because you're, for your age, it's normal, but you want to be optimal. 
And that's a big difference, is you want to have optimal levels of hormones, and especially thyroid that, of course, we're talking about today. Another question from our audience. You recently just talked a little bit about memory loss and taking uh, um, cholesterol medication. What about Alzheimer's in older patients? Is that something that thyroid medication can help? So a uh, question about specifically Alzheimer's or dementia, or we find brain fog with chronic fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia. And first thing to look at is T3. And again, as people get older, uh, with a lot of this chronic inflammation, cause a thyroid resistance, so and, and basically you can prevent it or see if we improve the symptoms. And also you find with like Alzheimer's that they'll get sleep cycle disruption where you basically can't sleep at night, but tired during the day. You give thyroid, the typical low thyroid patient, tired during the day, can't sleep at night. You give thyroid, prevents that. It basically fixes that. So you're back on the cycle. Again, it's about that cellular energy um, and really can, can get the the brain function working again. So huge benefits typically for, again, these chronic neurological illnesses, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia with the brain fog, and uh, and really get, some people go, oh, the fatigue I don't care so much about, but I just want my brain back. And, and T3 shown to be much better. Again, T4, the doctors will give Synthroid for it, doesn't work. Again, because you're not giving the right compound to get into the cell. Dr. Holter, we have another question from the audience. If I stay on syn Synthroid, will I have any long-term effects on my health? Okay, the question is again about Synthroid. You know, that's the standard. And most doctors will give that. Okay, so they go, most doctors will check your TSH and maybe T4. And then let's say your TSH is, is high. So let's say, again, you're that lucky or unlucky, you know, 10% of people that the TSH does pick up. And again, most of the people, it's going to miss, but what they do, so TSH is high, and then they'll give T4 till that's normal and normalize the TSH. But you look at studies, first they, they did studies on rats, you couldn't do this on humans, but they gave, took out the rat's thyroid, gave them T4, and they cut up all the tissues. And they found that it was impossible, again, impossible to get normal levels of T3 by just giving straight T4 and everywhere in the body except the pituitary. So again, the pituitary was able to bring in the T4 and convert to T3, but the rest of the body could not. It was impossible to get normal levels. Even with super physiologic levels of T4, some tissues, that what happens is some tissues did get enough, other tissues not enough. So it just, it's shown it doesn't work. And it's kind of, it's like, here, you know, what more evidence do you want? Here's a clear study showing doing what is standard doesn't work. But again, it's the standard. So a big problem again, so with any aging, depression, diabetes, chronic inflammation, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, that T4, it's, it's inappropriate to use T4. I mean, there's just so much better. Again, about 10% of the people will feel fine, but the rest of the people will feel much better. Now, let me mention one study, they'll say, doctors will say, well, T4, T3 is shown to be not any better than T4 in the studies. Now, there were a couple of studies that were basically rigged to show what they did. They took people on Synthroid, then they took away 50 micrograms of T4 and replaced it with 10 micrograms of T3. So they took T4 patients, my pen's running out, and then replaced it with T4, T3. Now... How much T4, or how much T3 is equal to how much T4? Hmm. Well, they arbitrarily said four to five times the amount. So they basically took 50 micrograms of T4 and said 10 micrograms of T3 was equivalent. But it's not. If a normal, healthy person will convert half the T4 to T3, it's at the most two to one. So what they did, they made these people hypothyroid, and the TSHs went up. So they clearly, the study was rigged. I was actually on a panel, I said, why, how'd you choose this number? And they said, no reason. You know, and it was designed to show that it didn't work. And what they said was actually, look at the people, it did feel a little better, but it wasn't that significant. And again, they made them hypothyroid. The fact that they didn't feel much worse was huge. So the studies that used adequate dosing clearly show over that T4, T3 combinations are superior to T4, but if the doctor will say, they'll point to these two studies, that were really rigged by the dosing. Again, they made them more hypothyroid. You wouldn't expect them to even feel the same. Um, and they'll use that to say, oh, T4 is still the standard. So um, again, most patients feel better with T4, T3, and the sicker the patient, 
the more likely straight T3 is better. Now, one thing the doctors say about T3 is once you're on T3, interpreting the levels is more difficult. Because again, when you give T4, it's very slow acting. It's a half life about seven to 10 days. So it's, it's in the blood like this. So you can check that. Now, when you're on T3, especially it's very, it's much shorter acting, but it goes into the blood and then into the cell. So what happens is if you, if you take T3 right before the test, it's high, but again, that's what's in the blood. Then it goes into the cell and it's low. So doctors will get confusing. They will confuse them because they'll have a lower TSH and one time it'll be very high T3 and low. It just, they, they don't understand the physiology. So they go, oh, forget, I'm not going to use that. But once you understand that, hey, the reference ranges are not the same as giving T4 and whatever amount goes into the cell, converts the amount, converts to T3, leaks back into the serum, that's the normal T3 level. But when you give T3, you're giving it in the blood, it goes up, can go high, and then into the cells. So again, doctors don't realize that and you people come back with a low TSH and a high T3 and a third of the doctors say they're high, a third of the doctors say they're low, and a third says, I don't know what the heck they are. Because again, they, it's interesting, they don't understand the physiology. Uh, and so the reference range does not hold. So that is one knock on T3. You have to know what you're doing. You can't just look at, you know, what's normal uh, in the normal reference range because it's a, looking at a very different thing. And they'll basically say, well, T3 is shorter acting, so you shouldn't use it. Well, there's half-life in the blood where the length of time, if you give a, a drug and half, the length of time it takes to get rid of half of that is the half-life. Now, T4 is a long half-life, so it's consistent throughout the blood, but again, it doesn't matter for getting into the cell. In fact, T4 is often high. People go, oh, you're high thyroid, but actually it shows you're low because it's not getting into the cell. But when you give T3, it is more variable because again, it goes into the blood than into the cell. So um, you can't use the standard reference ranges, do not apply. And again, that drives doctors crazy, but okay, what do you have to do? Well, be a doctor. You need to be more of a detective. Ask them, okay, what are, They'll say, oh, the person's high thyroid because their T3 is high because they're on T3. And, oh, you need to get off of that. Well, person's pulse is 54. They're low body temperature. They can't lose weight. They're gaining weight. You know, oh, oh, they're freezing cold. How could that person be high, high thyroid? And again, it's doctors have lost that art of medicine. And they're just, they look, you know, scan something. You're abnormal. You're abnormal. And once you complicate it, they don't want to do it, even though it's shown to be superior. So again, it goes back to the, I think the way the whole system is now. It's, you know, visits are getting shorter and shorter. Doctors are, you know, I can't say hello in seven to 10 minutes at the usual visit. Um, and so they have to, you know, even doctors that call and say, what'd you do? This patient's doing so much better. I explain the different tests and they go, oh, I can't do that anyways. Like, why? Well, that will take 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, but uh, you know, again, it's the system and telling doctors we gotta do something different. It's gonna take them more time to do. You gotta actually talk to the patient, forget it. You know, so, um, and, and just really trying to paint a picture with symptoms, talking to the patient. Again, does it make sense? Is this blood test, what is the blood test really showing? Uh, again, look at the physiology that optimal, yes, you wanna be optimal, but also you have to, uh, the doctor has to realize what will also affect the, the thyroid test that just as uh, yes or no, abnormal or normal doesn't hold. We have a question from the audience. Will my thyroid fix itself or will I need to be on medication forever? So the, the question about will, your, uh, will the thyroid to fix itself, well, if you get rid of the stress or the illness, uh, yeah, your thyroid will more tissue, more thyroid will get in the tissue, but again, you're, you won't, you can't, you can't heal unless you have thyroid. So it's like having a cast for a while and if you fix that, illness and give thyroid, now the body can work better and heal, then you may not need the thyroid. But because we have so much stress around us, toxins, pesticides, most people need to stay on it. But it's a small, just think of it as a vitamin, really to just be more optimal. So um, uh, yeah, people say, I never say you need to take this for life, just for a periodic and almost everyone, except for a small percentage, they want to stay on it because they feel so much better and are actually healthier. In close, I wanted to give you some information. People say, okay, what the heck do I do now? I know my thyroid's low. I have all these symptoms. I have all this family history of diabetes and depressed, and no doctor will be able to find out. So what, what do you do? 
Well, well, if you download on the site, there's a PDF that will kind of give you these tips and the things to move forward. But basically, how do you find a doctor that does this? And you can look in your area, um, and then when you call a doctor, I'd say one question to ask is, do you do reverse T3? I think that's a good screening test. And if the doctor says, no, what's that? Find another doctor. Um, sometimes primary care doctors, much more, you know, much more knowledgeable than endocrinologists. Again, that they, they just do it their standard way. And so you might have much more luck with family practitioners and things that are knowledgeable in this area rather than endocrinologists. Um, also, you can ask, hey, do you do T3? Is that your standard treatment or armor? Now, problem is a lot of doctors, too, they'll say, well, we do armor, but they'll underdose it. They'll have people on Synthroid, and they'll look in the PDR, which tells them how much armor to take. They'll say one grain of armor is equal to 100 micrograms of T4. Change them, and then the patient feels worse because it's not correct. And they go, oh, see, it doesn't work, you know, and they'll say, oh, see, that old way, it doesn't work. So you want to be sure the doctor is knowledgeable. Again, if they use time-release T3, uh, straight T3, no T4 is, is even better. Um, but I'd say the screening test is really ask and you can get a quick answer if, if they use reverse T3. Um, go to our website, National Academy of Hypothyroidism, I think it's a wealth of information. Uh, we'll go through all these points, I know, kind of bombard you with, with a, lot of, a lot of stuff to remember here. Um, and also want to uh, invite you to a thyroid summit, uh, which is on June 29th, uh, and with, with David Brownstein, and they're uh, about... June 2nd through 9th. The oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the thyroid summit is June 2nd through 9th. Over 30 speakers, um, Dr. Brownstein put together a wonderful cast of international experts on thyroid. So I really recommend that, that you go uh, and check this out. It's a free event. Go to our website and just uh, click the link. Again, holtorfmed.com. Click the link Thyroid Summit. It'll give you access to all those lectures. So I really rec recommend that. Uh, it's an uh, awesome panel of, of experts that he's put together. Also, uh, remember uh, Dr. Nancy Evans' chats uh, every month. The uh, next month will be on adrenal. So um, here to wish you well, and hopefully this information will, will help you feel better and live a better, happier life. Thank you for joining us this evening with 17 Years Ahead with Dr. Kent Holtorf. We hope you found his information on the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid disorders useful. This recording is available anytime to watch and share on holtorfmed.com forward slash.